So I finally got the filters for the 180 gallon aquariums built. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I did it for only about $18 in materials each. And I absolutely love these filters. Before we get started, to build them I used twin wall polycarbonate panels. You guys know these things. I've been building lids out of them for years. I decided I go with this for a couple of reasons. One, it's incredibly affordable. Two, if I need to bend something or whatever I wanna do, you know, I could bend it however I want, you know, use it for escape, you know, at the bottom to trap in some different levels of substrate, or maybe you wanna build a weir of some sort and you're really on a big budget, or you could do what I did, and that's simply, you could take scissors and cut these up to do whatever you need to do. So with the first panel, I simply cut it to the internal width and height of the aquarium itself. And then I took a couple of other pieces and decided that was going to be the internal width of the actual filter. And then for flow, I only needed about five half inch holes for water to pass through each chamber, but I did 25 instead. You never know, one of them could get clogged, there could be more flow or less flow, you get the idea. I decided, why not just drill some extra holes in it? Not gonna hurt anything siliconed everything in place, and that was it. It's an incredibly simple process. Now let me show you how all of this works and why I built it the way it is, and why I chose this method of filter versus another method of filtration that I was talking about previously. So this will be an example of an unfinished version of this filter. Ignore the egg crate on the bottom. This is going to be a Lake Tanga Yika Aquarium, and I wanna put in some massive rocks uh, and simulate a wild environment. Okay, so first and foremost, the front panel goes in, I'll take this lid off. The front panel goes in and I ended up cutting out a little section here for water to flow over into the first section. The reason being is simple and it's gonna look exactly like this. Water will overflow into the first section and be mechanically filtered. I also used a bit of egg crate to stop any fish from getting back there. Obviously using egg crate is only gonna start stop larger fish bigger than a half inch, but if I decide to go any smaller with any smaller fish in this tank, which there won't be, I would just add in some uh, mesh over top of that, not a big deal. So the way this is gonna work is water's gonna overflow over the top. It's gonna go through a massive chamber, which holds about six gallons or five gallons of media. The center one is about eight gallons of media. And then the final one is about six. So total it's about 18 gallons of uh, section taken up. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, you just took up a massive part of your aquarium. And I wanna point something very simple out. This is the 365 gallons aquarium filtration. And this overflow weir, is uh, five inches wide and it houses all of the plumbing. Nobody will say anything about that. This is one inch wider, it's only six inches wide. No different than having an overflow in your aquarium, except the entire filtration is based in here. I get the volume of a sump, yet no probability or no chances of leaks or anything like that. Very incredibly simple to maintain while being absolutely effective. Here's how it works. Water's gonna overflow and go through whatever type of media that you want to uh, polish the water with, whether it's going to be cotton batting, maybe you add in some activated carbon, a sponge, something like that. I'm just polishing the water now and getting it clear because all the top tanks are currently aquascaped and I don't wanna to ruin too much for you guys. But what I also could have did was mechanical filtration up here, build a little platform to, for it to sit on, and then a heater can go in the bottom section. And by platform, I mean something like this. I built this little platform to hold the biological media. It's gonna hold all of that media above the entrance so that water is forced to actually flow through it and it can't bypass it in any way. If I ever wanna add in more biological media, I can simply remove that platform. But for optimal flow and for testing, that little platform made of egg crate is all I did. And it's just kind of held together with zip ties. As it goes through this chamber, it's gonna flow up through all of your biological media. That's going to facilitate the nitrogen cycle. Gets to the top, overflows into the final chamber, which again, if you wanna use this for mechanical and chemical and even more biological, the first chamber, go for it. Second one, biological or whatever you wanna do. I tend to use three. So overflow, um, biological, followed by the return pump. Now the return pump is a large section. It doesn't need to be this big, but in order for me to get the pump in, it kind of had to be. As you can see the pump back there in this tank up here, 
and the return at the top. I love this for a couple of reasons. One, it's not really taking away from the aquarium. Of course, we're taking like six inches off, which shortens the length of the tank. Not that big of a deal because I was going to do an internal overflow anyways, and it would have just been one inch shorter. Um, however, doing it this way, I'm able to maintain each aquarium individually, meaning that this one can be fresh, the one up top can be brackish if I want, or I can have different water parameters moving forward in each aquarium. Because previously I was going to connect the two. Whatever's up top, gotta go down bottom. Now in case fish wanna get a little frisky and decide they can probably get back there, again, just a little cover to go right on top. They can't get in there now. Now that's it, it's about $18 worth of materials. I could have built it however I wanted. I could have made it smaller. Um, of course, this brace is in the way here, so it made it a little more difficult. I probably would have made it only about four inches wide, five inches wide perhaps, but in order to get the pump in and my hands in, that's something that I had to measure was to make sure I can actually do that um, with this glass in the way. It's like having a sump on your aquarium without having to drill your tank or make any types of modifications. If I ever change my mind and want it out, I literally just got to pop this panel off and I could rip this off out with my hand. I'm not going to need razor blades or anything like that. But it also, there's negative pressure here. So what that means is even though this is like a flimsy material and very lightweight, the same amount of water on this side is going to be on this side, minus about an inch. You know, something like this one. So water level's right around here, and we've got about two inches where there is a, a pressure, but it's just simply overflowing. I also love the idea that I can see absolutely everything functioning within the aquarium. Again, I'm trying not to show too many angles or show off too much stuff, but um, I can see everything and how everything is functioning, and this is going to benefit us in the long run. Now we could have went with any method of filtration with these guys. I mean, maybe I could have put canister filters beside them, built something else internally, but I thought this was the, the way I could maximize the space a cost-effective way using a material that you guys can actually replicate because originally this is what I was going to do anyways if you guys remember with the public aquarium that I attempted to launch that some people still think is happening but I made a video uh, explaining exactly what was going on I'll link it below for those that haven't seen it but this is how I was going to filter it anyways the tanks were gonna come jutting out of the uh, out of the walls but of course since that's not happening anymore I brought everything here and we're setting these tanks up exactly as I want doing everything that I really want to do that I think you guys are going to absolutely fall in love with especially those top three tanks they're completed now those videos are gonna start rolling out back to back we're gonna be able to get the fish in here shortly uh, and it's gonna be absolutely gorgeous out here I can't wait to be able to show you everything uh, moving forward so we got to get through those scaping videos and then I can like kind of move around out here you guys can see more now the racking systems did change slightly in design. I decided I was going to build them individually so I could still access the power and do a number of other things. Plus they're all bolted to the wall. These are not coming down. They're all bolted into the studs of the building. If this stand wants to come down, it's gonna have to take the wall with it. What if that did happen? I'd hope I'd be standing in the center. <laughs> but the bottom line is this. Originally I was going to do something that, that I actually built Originally, I was going to do something that I originally built uh, back in 2009, so like 12 years ago, and this is before I was documenting every do-it-yourself project. At that point on this channel, I was just using YouTube to update on my fish, silent videos, maybe a little bit here and there, just showcasing the projects. It was uh, a little while later when I started doing back-to-back do-it-yourself projects every week. But there's so many things that I never showed you over the years. And like, like I said, I've been, I've been keeping fish about 19, 20 years, something like that. And some of my favorite projects uh, are from more than 10 years ago. And it's simply because at that moment in time, a lot of the things I was doing was relatively new and nobody was really trying. So it was fun to be innovative and, and change the way I was doing things based off of what I thought was going to work. Now, originally I had a pair of 120 gallon aquariums. And mind you, this was 12 years ago. And remember how we started the gallery off with 120 gallon tanks? I had experience with these guys and I really love that dimension of tanks. So a lot of the things that I do, believe it or not, have a backstory that probably goes back 10 years or so. And maybe we should do a video where I'd showcase and, and I'll show you guys everything I used to do. Um, but for example, I had this stacked 120s. Now, I only have pictures of this uh, because at that time I wasn't really taking videos of the projects, more like pictures and posting them on forums and whatnot. But um, as you can see, it's, it's, it's pretty modern look for my level of carpentry skills, which is no, doesn't go much further than a table saw. But the two tanks are stacked yet staggered. So the one in the front is pushed all the way to the front of the stand, like exactly how as I build these racks now. And we have, and we have like this, these jutting out a bit. I push the tank all the way to the end. 
which meant I had a bunch of space behind that tank, which I could build a filter behind it, overflow through that, and down into the bottom tank. And I just built this, uh, this trickle tower using old aquarium lids, uh, and th the water would go through the top, which was this mechanical filtration, uh, rain over all of the biological media, and then finally going into the bottom tank. And the bottom tank had a simple pump in it that would pump the water back up to the top aquarium, which would continuously overflow uh, and, and continuously recycle. Uh, eventually, I think I added in some canister filters as well for additional water polishing and or because I had them on hand. And, you know, a lot of the times if you have extra equipment or an extra filter, you might just toss it on the tank just because. Now, that was the original way I wanted to filter these tanks. I thought it'd be really cool to introduce you to that, but it involved drilling the aquariums and building uh, smaller tanks and stuff. And I thought, even though many people wouldn't be able to do that because the idea of drilling an aquarium a lot of times scares everyone, uh, I've shown you how to do it multiple times, but once I decided on the racks changing and how everything was gonna be laid out, I gotta admit, I got a little excited because now I can finally build these continuous internal filters that are so easy to build that will allow you to have just as much media uh, and, and just as much control and just as much customization. You could build exactly what you want for like less than 20 bucks and a pair of scissors. Anyways, now that we're past the filter build process, I can now go ahead and fill those filters up with biological media that I already have cycled and ready to go with these fish. So the Oscars are going in the first aquarium with the Fajaca puffer, as well as the Bicher. The first tank is the Oscars. The second tank is going to be the Brackish Water Aquarium. And I gotta get moving on that because I ordered more fish and all the fish that I wanted to try to maybe find, I found and we're gonna be able to bring them in. And then the final tank, which is arguably my favorite aquarium. If you're not a member of the channel, like members um, or channel member or something like that, they all seen all of these already. So, and that's something that I do on the members only. So if you're not a member, perhaps consider joining because uh, I show everything in advance, whether it's pictures or whatever it's going to be. And then I want opinions and I soak them for everything they're worth. I want to know what you think so I, I can make adjustments before we put it to the public. But yeah, the Piranha Tank is arguably my favorite, but it's the last one of these three. And then we'll get to work on the bottom ones. I got to move all the fish here. I'm going to be able to move these fish here shortly. And this week, check out this. All the wood in the Episto Aquarium is finally sunk and ready to go. These guys are, uh, going to look amazing in there. I will say that when you initially add in manzanita, you can see like it'll, uh, it's a little bit of fungus on this. The initial skin, it's like rots. Um, so it's harmless, but it's ugly and it makes it look like really bad. It actually looks like beard algae, but if we kind of get up closer, it's just like a fungus or something like that. But yeah, this tank is ready for all of those opistos. We'll be adding them in here shortly as well. And I think this tank is going to be fantastic for not only observing them, but um, I think that, that this is a fantastic breeding environment for them as well. And if I had to guess, uh, I would say that they will be, what the heck is that? It's a little clover. It's like a lucky little thing. Maybe it's, it's actually, these, this wood was outside. So if anybody knows what that plant is, it's alive and this wood's been in here for weeks. Man, am I growing my backyard in here? Oh yeah, members only also know what the, I went fish shopping lately and you guys will see that in a few weeks, but they know exactly what fish I just recently got. To give you a hint, they've been at the store for a year. Nobody's bought them. I think they were just too expensive or too specific, but I had to get them. So the Oscars will be going in the first aquarium. The second one is the Archers. This tank is absolutely a mess, but it's just a holding tank right now. Um, I've got a ton of uh, tank mates coming for these guys. Uh, and if you're familiar with like a classic brackish aquarium, you probably guess what I'm bringing in. And then of course the piranha that are, uh, have to be in a blacked out tank because they really are not doing well in this tank. They're really skittish. But once you get them in the main aquarium, which I'll be able to do this week, they're gonna do absolutely fantastic. But as you can see, all that biological media and sponges and whatnot, we're gonna take all that and put them in their filter. That's where we're at with the gallery at this point. All the filters are built besides two of them. I simply ran out of materials. Top three are escaped. We'll be adding in the fish here shortly. And I got a few other types of videos. I know that you guys really enjoyed that Stingray Barb video. I got some other things that are very similar to that coming up here shortly. So if you're not subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you do if you're not already. And if you can't wait and you have no patience like I do, just become a channel member. Uh, um, I think it's like three bucks or something like that. And uh, you get to see everything in advance.